when everything in a game is stupid, it becomes increasingly difficult to fault individual sins without coming across as out of touch or without having to put up with accusations that you are just not getting the game's humor. This is how a work of fiction acquires herd immunity. I'd have an easier time sinning a Saints Row game than Mortal Kombat 11. But unlike Saints Row, where the absurdity is intentional, I get the feeling that Netherrealm are quite proud of their writing and believe they are telling the kind of marvelous story that will attract all the woke zoomers. But this is Mortal Kombat we're talking about, a series that was made and played by Gen Xers, which means the original storyline was tossed out like a pair of worn down windshield wipers for the first reboot, and now they've tossed out the entire car and decided to buy an electric bicycle for the second reboot. It took Netherrealm 8 Mortal Kombat games before things got so confusing as to be impossible for newcomers to figure out why porn stars and gay porn stars were ripping each other in half before they decided to reboot the whole mess with a time travel plot. It took them only three games this time around before writing themselves a time goddess excuse to start over. But I think this time it has less to do with the story being difficult to follow and more to do with Ed Boon figuring no one actually gives a shit. No matter how many times you reboot this series, you're not going to create something more than a worse version of Big Trouble in Little China. You should thank me, Raiden. Our battle changed you. For the better. I've never enjoyed the idea of evil as infectious disease, because you just know it's a cheap way of making a previously good character have a lazy heel turn, who will later face no repercussions when they snap out of it. But outside of torturing Shinnok and then cutting his head off to deliver personally to Liu Kang and Katana in the Nether Realm as a warning, Raiden doesn't really do anything bad that all this buildup would imply. In fact, if anything, he seems a better leader, since his first order of business is to launch a surprise attack on the Nether Realm that actually succeeds. I don't care if he's going red. I'd vote for that. Not even you can kill. Elder God. There are fates worse than death. Turns out, decapitating an Elder God is pretty effective at stopping one for good if you can't kill them. Which makes you wonder why Raiden and the Elder Gods didn't do that millions of years ago when they imprisoned Shinnok. This was not your destiny, Shinnok. Once again, the Thunder God has upset the balance of history. According to Kronika, it was not Shinnok's destiny to be decapitated. Therefore, she has to fix Raiden's mess. This is somehow a bigger offense than the time Raiden changed everyone's destiny by changing the future. A future where Shinnok would have still died like everyone else despite Kronika claiming her son must always be there to represent some abstract yin and yang metaphor. We've pushed back Shao Kahn, defeated Shinnok, yet none of our victories have come without cost. Ronda Rousey takes over the role of Sonya Blade for MK11. I understand the reasoning for casting a professional fighter for the role. What I don't understand is why they kept her for the role when it's clear she can't act. Sonya had more character when she was a pair of poorly supported breasts and a tactical vest. Your leadership and warfighting ability have earned you promotion to commander. But there are no family favors here. By special forces tradition, you still have to pass one last test. I need to kick the CEO's ass, ma'am. That's the military tradition for a promotion? Beating the crap out of your commanding officer? That normally ends in a court-martial. No one has shown a bit of concern over the obvious change in Raiden's character or his wearing of Shinnok's amulet. We should open a dialogue. Maybe there's an explanation. Liu Kang and Katana were friends once. Yeah, I'll open a dialogue with the demons of hell. This kind of talk was the subject of jokes in Doom Eternal, but here it's a serious suggestion. Buried deep beneath Liu Kang and Katana's castle is the Cathedral of Shinnok the seat of their power. Destroy it, and their undead army will fall. Maybe you shouldn't have given them Shinnok's head then if it somehow became the source of their power. Raiden's right, Johnny. We're not ready for another war. We've got to take out Netherrealm's army now, before Liu Kang can bring it here. I saw a US flag back in the barracks, but Sonya never has to receive approval to commit an act of war from the civilian leadership. That is a big demon army, but nowhere near what you would need to launch an attack on all of Earth. The way Earth is depicted, I could swear you could fit all of Earth realm into Rhode Island. Why would Revenant Cabal need his rebreather system? He's an undead zombie. He's the diversion. For someone who knows Raiden well, it took Liu Kang an awfully long time to figure out that Raiden launching a one-man assault against the forces of the Nether Realm wasn't the actual strategy. But then again, he seems to be winning quite easily, so maybe that should have been the plan. I want you to imagine watching Liu Kang pull this move from an outsider's perspective instead of Cassie's. He had to launch into a running slide from Cassie's peripheral vision just so he could stop inches from her face to say this line instead of attacking her. Special forces are here to stop Liu Kang and Katana's army from invading, and their plan is to destroy their castle. But Cassie just beat up both of them and left them lying on the floor. She could kill the two of them and be doubly sure that they wouldn't be a problem. And she has a personal reason to as well, since Liu Kang collapsed the ceiling on Sonya which results in her death. Kronika would later go on to inspire the design of the PlayStation 5. Kronika rewinds time to rebuild Liu Kang's castle, but then they never use it, instead staying inside Kronika's keep with her hourglass. I think all that was just Kronika flexing. What can be done? The 
past is the past, is it not? This is the same Liu Kang who was there every step of the way as Raiden attempted to change the future after receiving memories from his future self about what was to come. I intend to wind time back to its beginning and restart history. But even with my vast power, I cannot create this new era alone. Kronika wants to rewind time to undo Raiden's decapitating of Shinnok, but to do it she needs people to guard her while she powers up her hourglass, but she also pulls fighters from the past to guard her, which is what alerts everyone that she is messing around with the time to begin with. Had she just done all this in secret, I think she would have won no problem. After all, Raiden believed he had eliminated any threat to Earthrealm. I do not inflict bandits upon the poor. Kotal Khan is the same man who was having the poor executed for stealing bread in the last game. I can sort of understand bringing back fighters from the past who would serve you in your quest to rewrite history, but for the life of me, I can't figure out why Kronika also brought back people who would fight against her. She erases the current Raiden from the timeline and recruits Revenant Liu Kang and Katana, but then pulls Raiden from the past along with the past Liu Kang and Katana among others. We were at the Mortal Kombat tournament. Kung Lao had just defeated Shang Tsung and Quan Chi. All of these fighters from the past were pulled to the present during the middle of the second Mortal Kombat tournament in Outworld, and none of them looked like the versions that fought during that game. It's one thing to change a character's design in between games, but changing their past versions as well. Kronika must have seen what the women were wearing and said, You're not traveling through time dressed like that. Not in my time portal. By the time we get to Mortal Kombat 12, I expect all the female characters to be played by men in a weird bit of irony, since by then that will be the only socially acceptable way to safely portray a woman. Past Raiden isn't wearing his time amulet again. One time travel reboot is confusing enough, but this is now the second reboot that also happens to use characters that were in the middle of rebooting the original series. Ashtek custom requires all refugees be offered assistance. I offer it to you, Shao Kahn. Really? To Shao Kahn of all people. This is one of those moments where dipping your toes into modern political fights with a little woke messaging really shows through. Where exactly did all these Shao Kahn loyal soldiers come from? The only people pulled through time were the main cast themselves. Wasn't Devora captured at the end of Mortal Kombat 10? This game never explains how she's free to help Kronika. I know you. We are acquainted in your era. We were allies who became enemies. I am surprised, given our shared antipathy toward Shao Kahn. Everything changed after your defeat of Shinnok. Shinnok's defeated? Our realms joined to fight him. But in victory, you were hardened. Kotal Khan is glossing over quite a bit. He never joined forces with Earth to defeat Shinnok. In fact, his plan was to appease Shinnok by delivering the heads of Cassie and her team to him. You evade my questions, Devora. I routed your people, burned this hive, yet you aid me. Hold up, that's what you did to Devora's people in the past? Then why was she serving you back then? I still recall that flashback in Mortal Kombat 10 where Devora was in charge of the Shaolin prisoners Liu Kang and Kung Lao had to rescue. I've been in the future for a whole hour and I haven't seen one jetpack. Not one! The past Johnny Cage has already witnessed cyborg ninjas, and he's complaining about the future not having jetpacks. So it is true. I walked a darker path. After Shinnok went down, you became a different person. Red lightning, black clothes, authoritarian attitude adjustment. We still followed his orders though. For months I've been receiving vague premonitions of the future, but none of them foretold this. Speaking of that, where did the amulet you wore to receive those premonitions go? Why would the Nether Realm want to bust up your alma mater, Liu Kang? The Dragon Grotto. It's underneath the Academy. Earth Realm's Jinsei energy bubbles up in its springs. Kung Lao and Liu Kang reach the Shaolin Academy within minutes of hearing of a Nether Realm incursion there. They were in the Special Forces base somewhere in the US, and Raiden had already left to consult the Elder Gods. How did they get there so quick? And why didn't any of the Special Forces come with them? Our future, Liu Kang. It is insane. Liu Kang and Kung Lao's bogus adventure. But we can't change a future we don't fully understand. Mortal Kombat 9 had you trying to do exactly that, but I think I'm the only one who still cares enough to mention it. Whoever came here knew how to disarm these traps. I'm pretty certain that Buddhists wouldn't have death traps built into their temple. One of the tenets of their faith is to minimize harm and pain done to the living. I like Wrathful Undead Scorpion a lot more than the current living one, so I don't really mind that Kronika brought the OG Scorpion from the past back. But then he goes and dabs as he runs away from a fight. Jade and Scorpion prevent the trap from killing Liu Kang and Kung Lao since if they die, the current Revenant Liu Kang and Kung Lao will die as well. This only makes sense if the past versions of themselves have to return to the past to live out their lives to reach this point in the present, which we know won't happen since Kronika is planning to rewrite history, and no one else could possibly send them back to their own time but her. I will fight Cetrion, but how? You must find Kronika's key and gain control of her hourglass. 
Cetrion, an elder god, is actually on Kronika's side, yet reveals that she's the one behind this and what Raiden has to do to stop her. Since this time merger, I have learned about my future. That my champions fall. That I become a tyrant. If Kronika is defeated, will I be consigned to this grim fate? You've already seen one possible timeline where pretty much that exact same thing occurred, and you sought to change it. This time, while still in the middle of his previous time escapade, Raiden questions whether it is even possible, even though he must know by now that he eventually succeeded in stopping Shao Kahn in the past. Dude, they're like, totally evil usses. Are Revenant Liu Kang and Kung Lao trying to kill their past selves? Because as it was just established, that would also kill them. Why didn't Garrus just stop time to begin with instead of fighting them for the vials of Jinsei fluid? What we were told is true? You were involved in our deaths? Yes. Had the timeline continued, my decisions would have led to your deaths. But the Elder Gods assure me that such a future is not inevitable. This is but one of many possible timelines. That is a lot to take on faith. All of these characters have forgotten that they were in the middle of trying to change a bad future timeline when they were pulled to the future to stop another one. Grandmaster Sub-Zero reports heavy losses to his Lin Kuei clan. The time merger has resurrected his old enemy, Sector. Sector? Was he not the Grand Master who years ago enslaved the Lin Kuei? Yeah, he is. You only would have seen him a few hours ago back in your own timeline when you let Sector abduct Sub Zero. What of Sub Zero? Already on his way to shut down the factory. Grandmaster Hasashi is going with him. Grandmaster Hasashi? Hanzo Hasashi? I guess there were no hard feelings over the time Scorpion attacked a US military base, assassinated Quan Chi, and accidentally freed Shinnok who almost destroyed the Earth. I don't see how you're going to make a cyborg out of someone you saw in half lengthwise. Cyrix is your inside man. He was converted against his will. If we disable the behavior inhibitors that control him, he will turn on Sector. Sub-Zero destroyed all the Lin Kuei cyborgs after he was freed from Quan Chi's control. Why didn't he deactivate the controls on Cyrax back then if that was the case? He corrupted the Lin Kuei. You corrupted our clan when you made peace with this Shirai Ryu filth! Frost sided with Kronika because Sub-Zero made peace with Scorpion and even works with him. Yet Frost has no problem with Kronika recruiting the Scorpion from the past to work with her. Nor does she have any problem working with Noob, who was the previous Sub-Zero. Yeah, but stop doing your Dr. Claw impression, brother. Cyrax has fingerprints that can actually be scanned. Goodbye, Huai Liang. It is not the end. I will find a way to restore you. Shouldn't Sub-Zero know how to restore him? He was a cyborg as well once. Once he is repaired, can he be replicated? Hundreds of times. Thousands. You can't mass produce a cyborg. You need to start with a living human, then turn them into a cyborg through cybernetic augmentation. And so far all the cyborgs have been made from Lin Kuei assassins, and there can only be so many of them. You would also need a factory, and that was just shut down by Scorpion and Sub-Zero. I've already made a lot of gay porn jokes when it comes to Mortal Kombat, but seeing these two Kanos just reminds me of something. Allow me to demonstrate. Oh shit, I'm sorry. Sorry for what? I figured present day Kano was arrested in Mortal Kombat 10 after he was captured, but I thought the same thing about Devorah. Is anyone truly dead or out of commission in the series? I know my dad's still alive, but it's like I'm seeing a ghost. Yeah, Past Jax is standing right there, and his appearance is one of the bigger issues. Past Jax would have just had his arms ripped off by Ermac, and was being dragged back to Earthrealm by Sonya as a second tournament was concluding, which is when Kronika brought them all to the present, yet Jax already has his cyborg arms and required no rehabilitation to use them properly. Jax is the only person in the world who ever suffers mentally from all the crap he's been through. Post-traumatic stress is a weird personal story to tell in a game where I can make him rip his daughter's face off and put a cigar out on the bloody stub. That was not my plan for you. Your plan? You were to retire distinguished, not in disgrace. Years from now, General Jackson Briggs. More importantly, your daughter was not to serve, nor endure the same tragedies you have. Your home should be filled with grandchildren. Since Kronika's original plan must have been the events that culminated in Mortal Kombat Armageddon, where Jax was not retired and living a peaceful life, he was in fact dead by the end of that game before Raiden reset everything. In fact, Jax wouldn't even have a daughter had Raiden not messed with the timeline. He met his wife while recovering from being a revenant. The Tarkatans, long extinct, have also returned. Kronika also brought back the extinct Tarkatans along with Baraka. You would think that saving them from extinction would garner some loyalty, but later Katana will manage to sway them to her side. 
I must consult with the Elder Gods. I'd hate to have to go through a drive through with Raiden. He'd need to consult the Elder Gods over diet or regular. Revenant Jade just tried to kill her past self, which would kill her present self if she had succeeded. And this is something she's aware of, since she stopped Liu Kang and Kung Lao from dying to the gas. Wish to survive? Tell us where to find Shao Kahn. Here's an idea. Maybe you shouldn't let Devorah live even if she tells you. At the very least, take her captive. But that's a firm no to either of those smart people options. Kotal! This is cruel. Many didn't fight us. They are children. I can respect a lot of cultures, but Tarkatans butcher and eat people. Jade just snuck through their camp and saw that for herself. Do you really need to show mercy to people who don't show it to anyone else? Jade fights Kotal Khan over his decision to execute the Tarkatans, beating him and knocking him unconscious. She did this in the middle of a Tarkatan camp they knew Shao Kahn was in, which leads to them both being captured easily. It is too late. Blame yourself for the Elder God's deaths, Raiden. I was under the impression that Elder Gods can never be killed. That's the reason Evil Raiden decapitated Shinnok. Your actions have irrevocably altered Kronika's golden balance of light and dark. Shinnok's decapitation was the capstone. Maintaining balance is the plot you go with when you have no idea what you want to do, or have written yourself into a corner. This isn't even the first time Mortal Kombat has dabbled with this storyline. Restoring balance was exactly what Mortal Kombat Armageddon was about. I imagine future me is out kicking ass with these right now. Cassie told you that future you spent time as a revenant, yeah? Isn't there a rule about not knowing your own future since it may cause you to accidentally stop it from happening? I can't find a single rule of time travel fiction this game follows. Here's how you access incoming reports. Swipe here to cross-check them with past reports. The software can suss out the deltas. Now that's progress. Sonya was using a wrist-mounted touchscreen computer during the first Mortal Kombat tournament. She shouldn't be that impressed with this. That woman over there. She's the real deal. Oh, I got eyes, brother. As younger you, I saw him. He swear to tap that at the earliest opportunity. Past Johnny Cage is acting like this is his first time meeting Sonya Blade. This Johnny was pulled from the past during the second tournament. He had already met Sonya, hit on her, and punched her in the crotch. The writers of this game clearly have a different idea of what sorts of conversations soldiers have on base when it comes to horniness. Johnny promising to tap that would be pretty tame by barrack standards. Johnny got into a fight with Jax over this exact same reason in Mortal Kombat 9, which means Johnny would have just hours ago had his ass kicked by Jax for the exact same thing. If the past version of you is wounded, the present version will receive a scar, meaning the past version has to continue through the timeline to arrive at this exact point, which would mean all the present characters should have memories of going through this. It's impressive just how this game fails on every level of telling a time travel plot. The two Kanos stormed the base along with a bunch of Black Dragon members and cyborgs, and only kidnapped Sonya even though Cassie was in the room with her when they attacked. You have to wonder why they even include a tank and VTOL battle when it's just going to devolve into a martial arts fight a few minutes later. Sonya and your little girl? They're gonna die. If that was your plan, why did you leave Cassie in the base unconscious and take only Sonya? Cetrion informed me that Shao Kahn has captured Kotal Kahn. Which is pretty dumb when you think about it. Cetrion is on Kronika's side, and she freely gives away information that Raiden wasn't aware of. We have Earthrealm's support, your highness. With yours, we can guarantee victory. There is no path to victory without the Tarkatans. That seems made up. Why are the Tarkatans so important to victory? They were extinct until the time distortions brought them back. She is for Shao Kahn. We demand to see Baraka. You won't be seeing anyone. Liu Kang. Scarlet knows Liu Kang well enough somehow to recognize him in disguise, even though the two of them have never met. She was a DLC character in Mortal Kombat 9, with no appearance in the main story. Which do you prefer, Baraka? To be Shao Kahn's slave, or Kotal Kahn's trusted ally? You've made allies with a race of monster cannibals, even promising a leadership position to Baraka. You've suffered too long at this pretender's hands. But I've returned, and I will save you from his madness. Kotal Kahn has been depicted as a compassionate ruler of Outworld, but the people of Outworld eat this up. This is Shao Kahn, their former tyrannical ruler. He never struck me as caring for the people. They should be terrified by his return to power. This is a Make Out World Great Again speech. Games are still doing that four years later. This is the same Shao Kahn that was such a major threat that only with the power of the Elder Gods could Raiden stop him back in Mortal Kombat 9. Katana doesn't even kill him despite the threat he represents. She only blinds him. She did it. Of course she did. I guess Katana was the one who must win. Or you can take this as a proof that the plot of that game was bullshit. We don't need charity. We will share an Outworld's rule. Just as a reminder, Baraka eats people. Do you know of Karan, Raiden? 
Charon, of course. Who is Charon? Just because they replace a C with a K shouldn't mean Raiden has no idea who the Ferryman of the Dead is. With the Dragon Grotto's Jinsei Fountain sealed, there is no greater energy source in Earthrealm than the Well of Souls beneath Shang Tsung's island. That's three Mortal Kombat games in a row that revolve around some magical artifact of a god. I regret that I cannot join you. I must keep vigil for signs of Kronika's further tampering with time. Whether it be consulting the Elder Gods, barred by the rules, or keeping vigil, Raiden always has an excuse for why he can't help anyone. I recall mentioning Mortal Kombat 9, the idea that in story mode, there should be modifiers like losing weapons and moves. I'm glad to see that was actually done, even if only one time. Though Sonya still has a gun on her hip, I guess Kano checked her move list and saw it's just a character accessory. This Pascabal is from before he was burned and healed with magic in Outworld, which is what gave him his super speed. So explain how he has it now. They'll kill us whether we fight or not. Fighting buys us time to find a way out. We need to buy time for further bad writing to save us. I guess they couldn't get John Wick as a guest character if Cassie is fighting like this. Aaron Black uses revolvers, and he somehow fires them like a semi-auto and doesn't need to reload. If Cassie never needs to reload, she doesn't need to bother with all this martial arts stuff. Kano has wall hack eye vision, yet is still taken by surprise when Sonya climbs up on top of the truck to attack him. Kicks to the past Kano now affect the present Kano. This is something that never affects the other time-paired fighters. Otherwise, how did Revenant Liu Kang and Kung Lao manage to fight their past selves? Same with Revenant Jade. Let me give you a break. Quoting lines from the movie should only be allowed when you actually hire the actor from the movie. I'm aware I will regret saying this due to the Aftermath DLC. Sonya finally uses that gun she was still wearing when she was placed in the cage match. Who's the special guest villain? Garrus just butchered all those special forces soldiers. You don't stand there and make jokes about him after he's killed a dozen of the people you're supposed to be responsible for. Sonya Blade, mother of Cassie Cage. Yeah, what of it? Cassie Cage defeated Shinnok, son of Kronika. Since the Terminator is one of the guest characters in this game, I don't know why they bothered making Garrus, since he's the same goddamn archetype. He's a time-traveling juggernaut given a task by a greater being. He even targets Sonya, the mother of the kid who defeated a big bad. These statues were a stage in the original Mortal Kombat. Due to the retconning of the cast of the first game, these statues don't even accurately represent all the fighters that fought in the first Mortal Kombat tournament. Seems like only yesterday. It was only the other day for you. You're not as strong as you think, Jax. As I recall, Sindel made quick work of you. Sindel did the same to you right afterward. It's not a great put down when you're bringing up the time you both had your ass handed to you by the same person. And this Jax never died to Sindel. Rather than take the crown and return to Kronika, Noob has just been waiting around down here. Hang back, kid. I know I wouldn't want to fight my dad. How about we keep this between me, myself, and I? Since it has already been established that even attacking a person from the past can be felt by their present self, how does present Jax think he can fight his past self when every hit he lands would hurt him as well? Can we take an Elder God? Cassie beats Shinnok. Only because the cages are born with crazy magic powers. Maybe we have our own magic. If it were that simple, then Shang Tsung could challenge Elder Gods as well, because the crown only contains the human souls he collected. I'm going to say that if you train all of your life to fight like these people do, you can manage a pull-up to save yourself. Nobody here wants to hurt anyone. Now please, don't let this happen to our girl. So Jax is doing this for his daughter, but he's willing to let her die to get the crown. I think I'd call his bluff. It looks like caught on his home, perhaps hosting some unwelcome guests. Return to Earthrealm. Tell the others we found him. We'll deploy as soon as I return. Karin's house is right over there, and from that sound, he's clearly being attacked. You could both go save him, and then go return to tell the others. This one needs only render you unfit to ferry Kronika's enemies. You could just burn Karin's boats then. You fight for lost causes. This one ensures the Hive's survival. Who exactly is threatening the Hive? This is Devorah's entire purpose for serving Shinnok and now Kronika. But no one except Shao Kahn has been stated to have attacked them before, and she helped save him at the beginning of the game and used to work for him. I wonder if all these past self fights are just an excuse to work mirror matches into the plot. Ah. <clears throat> yeah. Poison. Devora stabbed Scorpion with those same ovipositors back in Mortal Kombat 10, but he wasn't fatally envenomated by them back then. Also, poison is the wrong term here. Poison is ingested. Venom is what a predator injects. I understand.
understand your mistrust, but I am here to assist you. I find that impossible to believe. With how many times Scorpion has switched sides in the series, I think everyone should just accept his heel turn as an eventuality. And they know from present day Scorpion that he can be reasoned with. So why treat the past Scorpion like he's unredeemable? Raiden, stop this! Step aside, Liu Kang. Put down the amulet. Its darkness is taking hold of you. So Shinnok's medallion is the only thing needed to corrupt someone like Raiden? What about that time Raiden used the medallion to trap Shinnok inside of it? That use didn't corrupt him. Enough of your madness. If you must die, so be it. This... this has happened before. Raiden hasn't actually heard Liu Kang say those words yet, since he was pulled through time before the two of them ever had their confrontation which resulted in Liu Kang's death. So who sent these visions of possible and alternate futures to Raiden? And why are they so much more direct and to the point than the visions he had in MK9? And how come this plot point that Kronika has conspired again and again across multiple timelines to turn Raiden and Liu Kang against each other, to keep them from becoming a threat to her, had nothing to do with the old timeline pre-Mortal Kombat 9? It wasn't until Raiden reset the timeline in 9 that they would end up at odds. The present Liu Kang was already set against Raiden in this timeline all according to plan, and then Kronika went and brought the past Liu Kang here for some reason. Meaning she created a scenario that could be a threat to her for no reason and works against her trump card for Raiden. Liu Kang and I will not be divided further by your machinations. <laughs> oh, Raiden. Do you think this is the first time you made that vow? We have repeated this exact conversation so often in so many timelines. I've lost count. Kronika's plan is to have her two children, Shinnok and Cetrion, battle each other for eternity in some weak yin and yang allegory. There was only one way her design could ever fail again and again, and that would be someone decapitating either Shinnok or Cetrion. And when your plan is eternal battle between opposing ideologies, decapitation of an immortal being becomes an almost certainty given enough time. And this time, she plans to completely write Raiden out of history. But I would assume he's messed things up for her before. So why is she only now thinking it's time to get rid of Raiden? You are welcome to try, of course but without Liu Kang by your side. If it's that easy for you, you should probably kidnap the rest of them along with Liu Kang just to be certain. I have mastered Shinnok's sorcery. I will add your soul strength to mine. Wouldn't killing the past you kill the present you? That's what the game has already laid out. If one of you wants to make me look real clueless by pointing out in the comments what I'm missing, when it comes to this game's concept of time paradoxes, then be my guest. You can set up a naval battle all you like. We all know they are going to kung fu fight in the end. But don't actually aim the ship's bow at any of the much smaller wooden ships. That way our ram will be completely ineffective. I recall Raiden zapping multiple cyborgs to death easily back in MK9 when he rescued Smoke. He doesn't do that here. What have I done? I'm a fool. God damn Jax is gullible. Hurry up and go in slavery or whatever in your non-canon story ending. It makes you look less dumb than this. Drowning cannot kill me, Raiden. That is unfortunate for you. The sea of blood is bottomless. You will fall forever. If the Sea of Blood is bottomless, why does Charon's ship even have an anchor? You have made a devil's bargain with Kronika Frost. You ignored me my entire life. Kronika saw my talent from the start. You two have never met. What the hell are you talking about? Is this another comic book story I'm expected to know? I don't see how absorbing one person's soul, especially your own, would make you that much stronger. Shang Tsung consumed how many souls and he was still beaten and bossed around. I would rather see you. So we have time travel, a useless pantheon of gods, character fusions, and power-up modes that change the main character's hair color. There's already Dragon Ball fighting games out there. Our success is no longer certain. We must make haste. Have you not been making haste this entire time? When is the hurry the fuck up part of your plan kicking in? Raiden mentioned being weaker here in the Nether Realm, but Liu Kang as a god is stronger than anything. Only these three get to assault Kronika's hourglass room despite all the forces that just raided her keep. At least bring Cassie with you. You know, the girl with the power to defeat gods. May the elder gods protect us. They're all gone except for the one that sided against you. I have no wish to harm you. Harm me? You already killed me! My fate was sealed the moment I joined you at Raiden's side. Aren't these grievances something you should have brought up to Revenant Liu Kang? Don't you need Cetrion for your plan to have her and Shinnok fight each other to maintain balance? It was explained by Raiden that gods exist outside of time, so she can't be brought back. I assume that's why you couldn't just bring the past version of Shinnok right before he was decapitated to the present. I'll hand it this. It's a far better final fight than Mortal Kombat 9 or 10 had. You get two endings to choose from, but the canon ending is a setup for selling you the real ending through DLC. Nightmare.